Good morning, folks. We've got things of beauty, conditions of woe, top science news, and the tremendous implications therefrom. We'll start at home, head out to deep space, and come back to Earth to close, but let's begin at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on our star, much like the last. The coronal holes are confined mostly to the polar regions. There are a couple high-latitude magnetic areas that threaten to become sunspots. None have done so yet. And the solar wind is calming down. That's especially visible in the purple plasma speed as it drops out further. But with further phi angle magnetic field fluctuations up top in blue, we continue to see some geomagnetic instabilities pop up here and there. We're sticking with the sun, but having a moment of serenity. In one of the greatest sunset green flash moments I've ever seen, a cloud bank above the watery horizon added an extra boost to the fine detail physics that produced these rare sightings. Such a good green in this one, decided to share the video along with today's article list. Also worth noting, Sakurajima went boom. Continuous ash emission for a few hours and a tall release there in Japan. Folks, while Australia's drought has taken out almost 8% of their wheat crop, compare to Zimbabwe where 50% of all crop output is gone. You'll recall from a few days ago the people there are now paying 900% more for their water. And while the southeast U.S. is baking in the first half of September, the west is not. Snow across a wide portion of the west making its seasonal debut, and also doing so in China at the northern end of a vapor system that is more likely to flood the parts of India and Nepal under the red. Eyes open there. The global August climate report came out, and this is the whitewash chart that the entire internet sees to bolster the global warming discourse. But that near average white color is very generous to their position, because when you don't allow that middle ground and demand the above or below average color be marked, you come up with a very different view of Earth. Yes, this is every month like this, and yes, it is done to mislead the public. Interesting bit on pulsars up next. Their powerful magnetic fields are constantly accelerating electrons to produce radio waves that come to Earth in a pulsed pattern. But when its binary comes between us, we get a Shapiro delay in the arrival of the waves. And using this method, they have determined that what they describe as a neutron star component is nearly violating their models of what should be possible in space. Little reminder, plasma cosmology takes a little different spin on neutron stars. Up next... Folks, this is a dark matter search with which I cannot argue. Now, while we think electrons, neutrinos, and positrons are as small as particles get, what if we're still missing a smaller electrical building block with fractions of a charge? This would not be a wholly unacceptable thing in the missing mass paradigm, certainly much better than imaginary particles which allegedly dominate the universe but don't interact and won't let us find them. Now on to something real, really real. To summarize, it was said that extra material around galaxies could replace the dark matter requirement if it's there and we just can't see it. Well, you might recall Hubble found that material surrounding the galaxies and it's lost light. Keck discovered those cold halos co-rotate with the galaxies. Caltech and NASA discovered that they're being fed by helical spiraling vortex filaments of plasma from the cosmic web. And today, we learn that the circumgalactic medium is indeed even more complex than we imagined. Instead of a homogeneous particle concoction, we find multiple temperature components, meaning that our long-standing assumptions have missed varying populations and energy dynamics on subtle levels, but which surround the galaxies and encompass an area ten times the size of those galaxies' visible star spread. Last but not least, we told you we'd come back to Earth, and we're finding the first step in what may wholly upend the thought process of the geo-interior. By taking the most detailed look at volcanic rocks and the physical imprints of their trip through the mantle, researchers have discovered unexpected chemical compositions and a much greater breadth of dynamic interaction between the crust and mantle than was originally believed. That is probably an understatement. And so is their not-so-subtle proclamation that the largest piece of our planet, the mantle, which makes up 80% of our planet, must now be reconceptualized with their different understanding of the chemistry. The concept of greater dynamics and interaction leaves us back to the evidence of crustal displacement, which is more likely to be caused by heaving mantle regions the size of continents, and which is already vulnerable to induced current in common solar storms. What happens when we get the every few thousands of years super flare? What happens if it's a micronova due to dust accumulation and electromagnetic surge? As crazy and terrifying as those earth and sun comments just were, 
This has happened over and over again, and we are due for the next one. The full story is found in Cosmic Disaster, our film linked right below this video in the description box along with our other two films from last month. If you are new here and haven't seen these movies, they catch you up on nine years of the most successful citizen science group on the internet in one day. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.